All right, y'all, it's part four of our four-part mini-series on why calories are not what's making you fat. Now, some of you probably are getting agitated or frustrated and you're thinking, just get to the point. Tell me how I fix this inflammation and hormonal thing. Well, hey, I just want to tell you I appreciate you being patient with me. I think it's very, very important to understand why things are happening so that way you can sift through some of the information and see if the information is valid, right? Because if you're getting the wrong information, it could have detrimental effects, right? So that's why I think I'm a big fan of always educating people. Plus, one, once you get more information, you're gonna be more confident in that information that you're doing. Like, here's an example. If you ever been to the gym and you just feel intimidated and you're not sure like what to do because you don't know the mechanics of the movement, you don't know if you're gonna injure yourself, or you, you might even think you look silly doing it. <laughs> so you're like, I'm just gonna save myself the embarrassment. But as you start to learn how to do it, you build more of the confidence, and then you're gonna be able to go in and train like a boss. So that's just an example why I think information is so important. So if you remember on the last videos, we talked about inflammation and hormones being the key drivers of why you're gaining weight. Now, don't get me wrong, there, calories do play a part in the whole equation. It's just a small part. And so what I wanna help you do, help you understand on this video, is we're gonna be covering lifestyle factors that can help you reduce the inflammation, get yourself back to becoming a fat burner and losing weight. I'm sure a lot of you guys would be excited about that. So here's the thing. There's five key areas that I talk about all the time, and these are lifestyle factors that you can start working on. Um, you just gotta start applying them in your life. Now, I'm gonna be coming up with uh, specific content on my YouTube channel, so if you haven't went there, feel free to go there and subscribe to our channel to get a lot more of the specifics. I'm just gonna be going over the five basic lifestyles on this video to help you just understand the basics. So with that said, let's dive into those five areas. So these five areas are your nutrition, your exercise, sleep, stress, and toxins. Now, here's the thing, is these five lifestyle factors, they can work for you or they can work against you. And for the most, most of the people that are struggling losing weight, they're inflamed, their hormones are out of balance, these lifestyle factors are most of the time working against you. And here's the thing, if you start changing habits in your life and doing some of the opposite of the things that you're currently doing, you can start to get these five lifestyle factors to work for you and reduce some of the inflammation, okay? Let's just start with nutrition. Okay, nutrition is very, very important. I think we all know this, and we know that quality of food matters. And for the most part, a lot of us can change our diet, start eating real whole foods, and see some changes. But here's the thing, a lot of us have been stressed and put, on, put so much metabolic damage on our body that we've gotten way over to this point and we need different strategies like the ketogenic diet or things of that nature to kind of get us back in line where we, we need to be. Okay, so that's why I'm a big proponent of the ketogenic diet for anti-inflammatory reasons. With that said, I want you to know that there's not just one size fits all approach. I'm not saying the keto is the only way, but there's a lot of reasons why I'm a big fan, and we'll talk about that on other videos. But here's the thing, you've gotta start getting your nutrition in, in track and doing some things that's gonna help lower inflammation, getting good quality nutrients. So I won't spend a lot of time there, but let's go to exercise. Exercise is so, so important, but a lot of us are always just pulling the more trigger because we think of that calories in and calories out mindset. We're thinking just work out more and eat less. And so we get in this thing where we're just going to the gym six days a week. Um, sometimes it's twice a day. We're cutting back some of our calories. And on top of that, we've got stress in our lives from work. We're not sleeping good maybe. Putting you in a position where you're, it's working against you and you're not being able to be effective and your body's in this stress state. So the exercise that you are doing is almost maybe being counterproductive. So you think you're doing something really good and it might be a little bit off. So I'll come back to that in just a second when we come back to these stressors. But let's go into uh, toxic stress. You know, we, we, we all know that we're bombarded with toxins. We're bom I was just talking with you know, one of my clients today and he was going to the doctor and he was talking about how he's allergic to like formaldehyde and some other, other things of that nature. Well, come to find out, they built a house a couple years ago and all these toxins like formaldehyde are inside the, the flooring, the cabinets, all these building materials. And so he's walking around sniffing and sneezing and coughing and it's just horrible. So we've got toxins there. We've got toxins of, of lotions and things that we're putting on our skin. We've got shampoos, toothpaste, colognes. I mean, you name it. We've got uh, all, the, all the cleaning products that we have in our house are very, very, very toxic on the body. And then you add, compound that with the different types of toxins in our foods that we're eating. 
I mean, it's just unbelievable. And so our bodies are bombarded with these toxins, the plastics and heavy metals and so forth. Try to be cognizant of those things and try to eliminate a lot of that stuff out of your life. Um, it, you're not gonna do it all at once, but here's the thing, you can start making slow changes. You know, uh, I started changing different toothpaste. We use different deodorant, right? Like you've got heavy metals and things like that in your deodorant. <laughs> Change some of your house products. And then obviously start changing some of the food, going back to the diet. You know, we wanna eat good quality whole foods and take some of all these, everything that you look at, you know, on the shelves and you look at the back of the box, I mean, it's loaded with different ingredients. And I think a lot of you have heard and you know that, you, you know, if there's a lots of ingredients, you probably wanna stay away from it. But with that said, just try to start being cognizant of it and eliminate some of those things. Those are gonna drive, you know, some of the plastics and things in our, in our life. What they are is they're endocrine disruptors. They bind to the same receptors as some of the other hormones, you know, you know like your thyroid hormone. Um, some of the phthalates that are inside of plastics, they mimic and they look like the same structure as thyroid hormone. So a lot of times they'll compete for the same receptors on the thyroid receptor. And so then it causes all kinds of disruption on your thyroid. And we told you that if your thyroid is low, you're gonna have problems of storing fat. It's gonna slow your entire metabolism down. So that's a big takeaway as far as just eliminate some of those them toxins, okay? Um, and then sleep and stress, they kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> a lot of times when you're stressed out, you're not sleeping good. And when you're not sleeping good, you become more stressed. And all these are just a vicious cycle. And you, what you gotta do is get the cycle turning back the other way, right? So, you know, a lot of times you gotta figure out how to be better at stress management. I know that's easier said than done. Um, here's the thing what I found is there's a lot of things that we're causing our own stress. Maybe you're just adding too much on your plate. Uh, maybe you're, you've got your kids in every sport known to man and so you're constantly driving from one place to the other. You don't have time to take, for, take out for yourself. But believe me, it's worth taking time for yourself. It's not selfish, especially for you ladies. I know that's a big problem for you because you're nurturers and you take care of other people. But with that said, you gotta take some time for yourself and you can't be, you can't be everything to everyone. Here's what I've noticed with people is a lot of times that people have extra stress on their life and doing everything. They're trying to take care of everybody all the time and they just put themselves on the back burner. Well, then it leaves you stressed out, overweight, you don't have any energy and you can't be effective for anybody else. You're just not giving your best self. You're snippy, you're crabby. You have low self-confidence because of it and that translates into every aspect of your life. So it's not selfish. Let me tell you guys that it, it's okay to take a little bit of self-care. Now you can take that too far as well where it just becomes self-absorbed and you become very narcissistic. We don't, we're not promoting that, but it's important, right? To take some time for yourself. And then, you know, your sleep. Sometimes, here's the thing is, if you're not sleeping good, it's gonna cause a lot of these other stressors to manifest themselves. Um, you need good, at least good eight to nine hours of sleep and you need quality of sleep. So sometimes you might be sleeping, but you're not getting quality of sleep. Uh, a lot of people are running on you know, four to five hours of sleep a night, and studies have shown that just a, a lack of a few hours sleep a night can drastically change insulin sensitivity, so you become more insulin resistant. Um, it, it raises cortisol and adrenaline, and you have all these other shifts in the hormones like we talked about that causes more inflammation. So just low amounts of lack of sleep can do that. Try to get yourself into habits, getting yourself into, like for me, I get up early throughout the week to be able to train in the mornings at five and 6 a.m. So I, I just make it a point to kind of get to bed at a decent time. And I know a lot of you guys might be like, that's totally weird, I just couldn't do that. But here's the thing, you gotta create some habits, create some structure in your life. I go to bed somewhere around nine o'clock. That may be weird for you, but I know it's important and it's gonna make me a better person, more effective throughout the entire week if I'm doing those things. I'm just gonna be better off overall and I'm gonna buy back time and back, back, buy back quality of life as I age because I'm gonna be more healthier and I'm gonna be better for, for it. So that's just the way I look. I look at it proactive. I look at 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road and what type of lifestyle that I want then. I don't wanna wait till something bad happens till I start thinking about living a healthier life, right? Who wants to be 67 years old where you're medicated, you're on all kinds of drugs, your joints hurt, you're overweight, you don't have any energy, and you can't do a lot of the things that you want with your grandchildren or whoever it is, the people that you love the most. So 
again, let's just sum all this up is these are lifestyle factors that are very, very important. Now, here's the thing. If you're doing all these things right and still not getting results, sometimes there's things that are deeper than just those lifestyle factors that are causing inflammation. And this is where we need to take a look under the hood. Find a good functional medicine doctor. I'm working with a doctor named Dr. Jake Michaels out of Troy and Winchester Sports and Spine. And you might need to take a look at some of your hormones. Maybe there's a, a dysbiosis in the gut where you have uh, an overgrowth of bacteria. So you could have yeast, candida, you could have heavy metals. Maybe you've been exposed to mold and you don't even know it. Maybe you have mold in the house. Um, sometimes th these are things that are prevalent in our society. You might have Lyme's disease. You might have been exposed to heavy metals like lead or mercury that you weren't aware of. And those heavy metals, what will happen is they'll get deep down into the muscle tissue and they'll, they'll stay in there and they're called neurotoxins and they'll stay deep down in the tissue. And sometimes when you have stress, those heavy metals will release and cause all kinds of hormonal disruption, right? All kinds of inflammation. All of a sudden you're like, holy cow, why am I all of a sudden I'm having all these, this brain fog, these symptoms, uh, you, you feel crappy, um, whatever it is, autoimmune diseases, these are prevalent. So it could be something deeper and you just need to dig a little bit deeper. Remember at the first video I said, keep asking yourself why, 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 and finally you'll get to that root cause. But don't just stop just because you've made some, some good lifestyle changes and get frustrated and say it's not working. You just kind of got to keep digging deeper, okay? So look at this as like kind of a science experience. What I've found with a lot of people is they get so frustrated in the process. Um, maybe they're looking at the scale. Maybe they're looking at different other numbers. Maybe look, they're looking at their body fat and maybe they don't see the change they want and they get so, so frustrated. And they get so hung up on it. Here's the thing is those are, that's just information for you to look at to give you things to change and not change. And if you go through this whole process, you're gonna start to learn how your body operates and finally get back to healing the body and operating like it should be and then you'll become a better fat burner for it. So guys, I know that was a lot of information right there but I think it's important. Start living those five lifestyle factors. Go to our YouTube page, subscribe to channels because we're gonna be giving you specific things that you can do in each one of those areas. So I hopefully you guys enjoyed this information. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I'll put a link to our YouTube page. We would love to hear feedback from you. God bless you guys and I hope you have a great day. Peace. Boom. <laughs>